Oh my head, where the heck am I? No questions. You will review. Failure to comply will result in extermination. What? You're forcing me to review something against my will. I know I just normally comply with this, but you know I can defeat you, right? I also know that you aren't allowed to. Eh, it was worth a shot. So, what do you want me to review then? A movie from the Cho Deno trilogy. Oh, well, that's no big deal. I actually kind of liked the Cho Deno trilogy. You will review episode red. Oh. Fuck! Silence! You will review! Review! Ugh, can I at least get up first? Negatory! Okay, fine. You know how people say that everything's a better love story than Twilight? Well, I don't think that you do an Ari subplot in Kamen Rider Deno was. In fact, I think it might have actually been worse. At the least, it was way more convoluted, much like the time-traveling mechanics in general in this show. Basically, Ari Nogami's fiancé, Sakura Yuto, vanishes without a trace. It turns out this is due to him having given him his younger self the Zero No spell in cards so that the younger him could join Kamen Rider as Kamen Rider Zero Nose and protect Ari, basically. However, there was a constant subplot about how younger Yuto and Ari may have had have a thing together, except kind of not. I don't even remember exactly how it went in the show. And this is kind of creepy, really, considering his older self was her fiancé. Now, Age of Consent is lower in Japan, so that's not really an issue here, and I'm not going to bother complaining about it. So, Episode Red was basically about bringing the subplot to a close, after the show already ended. Face yourselves, everyone. It's going to be a bumpy ride. No pun intended, as I'll explain later. The movie begins in the more recent past, where older Yuto is visiting Ari in the hospital. The narration explains that he vanished to protect her. The villains, the villains from Daniel, were trying to travel back into the past to wreck the past. The narration explains that the younger Yuto is from the farther past, and now the two are the same person, but not quite the same, as younger Yuto is creating a different future for himself. Also, Ari doesn't view them as the same, either. You see why this is so... stupid? This is already just... I mean, instead of a brain-dead bimbo going gaga over a vampire or werewolf, it's sort of a love triangle of sorts involving the same person, uh, but the per their past and present selves. Of course, what makes this even more different from a normal love triangle is that the future self has ceased to exist. At least they didn't invoke a grandfather paradox. No, actually that happens in a later movie with a minor character, and it makes even less sense. After the opening narration, we see that the time-traveling train, Denliner, has gone completely out of control. Hence why I said no pun intended before when I said it was going to be a bumpy ride. And we go into Ari's coffee shop, the Milk Dipper, which is closed for redecorating. And, oh look at that, the note has a cute smiley. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. 
Ari knocks some boxes over the ever unlucky protagonist, her brother Rotoro Nogami, and the comic relief duo Ozokai and Mirua enter, I probably just botched their names, having brought Ari lunch and caused her to make more boxes fall on Rotoro. I just never catches a break, does he? The two comic relief guys fight over here. The, her. This happens a lot when they're around. But she says that she's gonna make them coffee, which calms them down. And Rotoro was about to go out to get some coffee cups when. Sends you! And this is Momotaro, the renegade member of the villain group, The Imagine. Uh, which are basically a bunch of creatures, sand creatures, based on various myths and er, story, ta fairy tale sort of things. And um, he is one of the five renegade imagine who can become common Rider Denno, previously having to possess Rotoro in order to do so, but they're now able to take on their own physical forms. However, they were inside the Den Liner, so the only option was to possess him again. Momotaros explains that they're trapped inside of the out of control den liner and not even the possibly time lord owner of the den liner can control it. Apparently an imaginant snuck its way on board and used a faulty ticket to send the liner out of control. How the Imagine got a ticket or managed to sneak past owner is beyond me. Momotaro thinks that owner can handle the deadliner situation himself and just wants to beat up whatever Imagine did it. Rotoro thinks he's having a bit of deja vu and the opening sequence for the Chodeno trilogy happens. The comic relief duo Ari and, and Ari are walking outside when they literally bump into a pair of thugs. Folk and Sko I mean Ozaki and Mirua try to protect her but are beaten down when their bags were turned. Yet another underhanded trick by these two. Momotaro's homes in on the Imagine, it turns out the two thugs were asked by the Imagine's contract holder to sell Ari. You see, Imagine need to form and or fulfill a wish contract to get their own bodies. Then when the contract is fulfilled, they can jump back in time to what the contract holder thinks is the most important time for the contractor holder's memories. Um, yeah, it's kind of like um, Madoka Magica, except kind of not, I don't know. Momotaros and Rotoro spot Yuto, and they think that he might have been the one who hired the thugs and give chase. Yuto gets away, but Urataros, one of the five good imagines, says that the deadliner stopped for the time being so Rotoro can get on board. The fact that it starts and stops at random kind of makes this sound like a pretty bad idea. They get on board and we're introduced to three of the other four Imagine. Where's the fifth? I'm actually not entirely sure. As far as I can recall, he's not actually in, the, in any of the trilogy, uh, yet he's what puts the Cho in Cho Climax form. Without him, it would just be Climax form, but... I'm pretty sure Cho Climax form shows up in this trilogy at some point because, you know, it's the Cho Deno trilogy. I honestly don't remember, but it would seem off if he, if the form didn't. The fifth was a swan sort of guy named Sig, of course being based on the swan princess and he acts all high and mighty because he thinks he's a prince. The other four are the um, ill-tempered Red Oni Momotaros, who is uh, kind of rather ironically based on the myth of the Peach Boy Momotaro, whose enemies were the Oni. <laughs> yeah, that's Rotoro's fault. The Blue Turtle Urataros, based on the legendary fisherman Urataro. Kentaros is a yellow bear based on the golden boy Kentaro, and the purple dragon and youngest imagine of the bunch, 
Rutaros is based on the Dragon Boy Rutaro. You can definitely see a pattern there, and they were actually all based, uh, named by Rotaro, and they are collectively known as the Taros. No, Ultraman Taro isn't one of them. That's most likely why he appeared in the Imagine anime. So, after watching Ultraman Ginga, I really have to wonder if that's the only reason. I personally wouldn't know as Ginga was my first and currently only Ultraman series watch. There are two other humans on the Denliner besides its owner. Uh, Kohana, originally introduced as an older character named Hana, her timeline was present was destroyed by the evil Imagine, and so she reverted into being a little girl with her older self's mind. She kept her memories due to her being a singularity point like Rotoro, which means that alterations to the timeline don't affect them. However, major changes like the destruction of a certain point in time seem to hold a certain amount of effect, as you can see. She's also not really very fond of the Taros initially, but she grew a soft spot for them, even Momo Taros, who she liked the least, and she still puts him in the his place when she needs to. There's also the always energetic Naomi who serves coffee, which is usually poorly made, but the Imagine always love it. She even once put wasabi in the coffee. <laughs> she's kind of hyper and upbeat, and she's, I guess, apparently kind of hard to surprise according to the Common Rider wiki. I don't know, honestly. Anyway, Hana and Urotaros explain what Momotaros already explained and add that the ticket had no day listed, only a month and a year. January 2010, meaning the deadliner is stuck traveling through the same month over and over. Oddly, the movie came out in May, not January. Lack of foresight does not seem to be the issue here as it's an entire four months off. Rotoro asks a question so that's actually a kind of a good one. Why would an Imagine do that? Owner says it's most likely to stop them from pursuing it, and we see Dena, Buto's Imagine partner, is with the passengers. Meaning that it actually couldn't have been him who sabotaged the train, as the Imagine who did so already escaped. Rotaros calls Owner out for not really explaining why the Imagine sabotaged the train in detail, and Owner exposits on the Imagine like I already mentioned, and Rutero and especially Urotaro should already know these things. The Taros tease Momotaros for not having caught the Imagine, but Momotaro says he thinks it's Utope who's behind things. Denab overhears this looking in the window for the train car, and Momotaro wonders if it was him. Momo, you know what Denab smells like, you dolt. Someone's spying an Ari at the Milk Dipper during Momo's explanation, but I couldn't tell if it was you two or not, but I don't think it was. Momo Taros is still certain it's Yuto, then Denab comes crashing in. Denab confesses that he took control of Yuto and hired the thugs, that classic film daydream of what he wanted to happen appears. Wow, I didn't even need to add that in myself. Yuto was mad at when Denab said that he did that and chased him off the Zero Liner. Ooh, and again, the jokes just write themselves. Urataros, the womanizing ladies' man of the group, scolds the Denab for using such a trick. Kentaro says that Yuto will just grow up and marry her again, but both Rotaro and myself have doubts about that. Owner says that they need to do emergency maintenance, which apparently consists of tethering down the Denliner. <laughs> okay. Kentaros asks Rotoro why he doubts that Ari will get together with Yuto, and he explains how Ari 
use both versions of you to a separate people, like I explained before. That makes more sense than it probably should, considering that you two will grow up to look like his present self, but with his present self being constantly wiped from existence and Yuto forming a new future all the freaking time, it seems unlikely that present Yuto will remain the same exact person. This doesn't make the possible romantic interest of Ari any less creepy. Kintaro's reasons that Hana will be uh, uh, Hana became younger and she's still the same person. But Rotoro explains that Hana's situation is actually very different and that Ari will most likely always remember the present Yuto regardless of how many times he's been wiped from existence simply because her love for him is that strong. This might actually explain how Yuto keeps getting more zero nose cards even though he used all of them up already. Well that's just my theory anyway. A Toku theory. What the hell, Momotaros? Conquer, yo! Anyway, the thugs return and start wrecking the milk dipper. Ari strongly protects a telescope given to her by older Yuto, then Yuto, the younger one, comes in and wipes the thugs out. Honestly, just because I don't like the subplot between these two doesn't mean I don't like how awesome this guy is. The thugs run away, and who I think I s uh, the guy we saw earlier is outside breathing heavily. A boring minute or so of awkward silence later, Yuto is about to leave, but Ari offers him some coffee. We cut to the guy who is stalking outside, staking out outside the milk dipper, upset that Yuto beat the thugs up instead of him. We're then introduced to the pig imagine, based on, of course, the three little pigs, his shoulders having minds of their own. Momotaro smells the imagine, but it seems his old age is catching up with him or something. Even though it's barely been a year or so since he got his own body. So, Urotaro possesses Rotaro instead. Why he bothered possessing Rotoro, I honestly have no idea because he can just become dead on one's own. The pig imagine complains some more about how his contract holder has failed, but his contract holder decides that he's had enough. However, the pig imagine refuses to leave him alone until the contract is fulfilled. You wrote the row finds the imagine and you Uratoros reprimands the contract holder for using sturdy means to get a woman, just like you did. Urtaros also seems to be getting some deja vu, and you know, I get deja vu all the free. No one cares. Continue reviewing. Alright, sheesh. Who wrote her? You wrote her out, becomes Kamen Rider Deno's rod form and proceeds to attack. As Urotaros is fighting, Denob comes in guns blazing. However, when Denob calls Urotaros Kamitaros, Urotaros corrects them only to call him Odebu, and Denob corrects him, and the pig imagine manages to get away with the contract holder while the two are distracted. Yeah, way to go, Denob and Urotaros there. Urtaros and Denob reason that he's the one that bro broke the Den liner, and Urtaros reveals that he's also the one who hired the thugs this time. Back at the Milk Dipper, Ari's preparing the coffee, and here comes one of the reasons I really hate the subplot. Watch.
どうぞあのねお砂糖入れる前に一口だけそのまま飲んでみて甘みの強いコーヒーなの今度桜井君が来たらぜひ飲んでもらおうって思っててこれ大抵の女の子が気に入ってくれるんだ女の子あ,あでも大人の男の人でも好きな人いるし私ももちろん好きだしごめんなさい気悪くした別に確かに味付けはお子様っぽいのが好きだから。甘い気はする<笑>最初だけ味わったらあとはお砂糖入れてねねえ知ってる世界的にはお砂糖やミルクを入れて飲む人の方が多いの。なんかいい雰囲気いいさ、ゆうとしあ、いけないいつからお砂糖入れなくなったのかな、ゆうと最初に会った時はもう入れてなかったけど<音楽>それとも。もう違ってきてるってことかしらねえ桜井君あなたの未来だったはずの優斗は消えたもうあなたは未来に縛られない当然私にも優斗はこの時間と私や私たちにつながる未来を守るための選択をしたの自分が消えると分かってても。ゆうとはそういう人だった Don't see what the problem is there? Well, 
Tell me, what exactly happened in that scene? Oh yes, that's right, next to nothing. This wouldn't even be such a huge deal if this sort of thing didn't happen all the freaking time in the show. Of course, it's even worse for a reason I'll explain a bit later. So, the big imagine and the contract holder are setting up for an insanely desperate attempt at winning Ari over. And then we get another slow paced scene where barely anything happens, but this time Denab apologizes for the first attempt at get the thugs attacking Ari, and we get a little bit of bonding between you two and Denab. <laughs> Those two are so hopeless, aren't they? Back on the den liner, they try to fix Momo's back and some Rotaro's ethics happens while Onar takes some measurements. Yeah, you and me both. Naomi asks Ona what he exactly he is up to and says that his look-alike station master of the King Liner Terminal train thing contacted him. Being cryptic as always, he doesn't actually explain what the station master said. Rotoro goes back out into normal reality when the post tying down the Den Liner all come loose and Den Liner goes out of control again. Ozaki and Mirura are walking with Ari again, this time having prepared themselves for another attack, but Ari is worried about their well-being. The pig imagine appears, and this is exactly why I hate keep the threat accidentally calling them full skull. <sighs> you two and Denab were stalking Ari in case another attack happens and go after the imagine. Only to find that Rotoro is also hot on its trail. Rotoro transforms into the incredibly weak, imagineless platform because he can't connect with the Taros all, at all this time. Platform, like I explained, is incredibly useless. He attacks the Pig Imagine, but that goes as well as you would expect, so Yuto and Denep have no choice but to come. Kamen Rider Zero no Zero form and the Danabic Buster, respectively. The Big Imagine reveals that he's got a bit of a Batman gambit up in his sleeve this time. If the contract holder fails to win over Ari, he'll blow up a truck full of gasoline with the contract holder inside of it. Yuto decides to allow himself to get beat up and the contract holder runs off the Pig Imagine. Or at least that's what he would like to think. Turns out it was just a daydream again. Yeah, this is why it's not the Xantos Gambit. He keeps hesitating, so the pig puts Ari inside the back of the truck and claims this is a loophole for the contract, which almost works. Almost. The contract holder takes off in the truck for no explainable reason, and Yuto's train, the Zero Liner, arrives. Meanwhile, the three Taros with working backs try to use the motorbike Denver to steer. 
This doesn't work because the train is stuck on autopilot and we see the train running wild some more. Zero Liner gives chase after the contract holder, but he makes a turn that the Zero Liner could match and Uto tries to correct the course of the contract holder continues pointlessly driving for no reason. Rotoro finds Momotaros in a hobo outfit being harassed by a dog. Momotaros revealed that he jumped off the den line earlier in the month because he was making his back hurt too much and that a pair of homeless people had been taking care of him. Remember folks, not all homeless people are as bad as you think. My story writer's mom was in the Occupy movement. No, silence, continue, review. What, I can't even have a small, tiny little PSA during my review? Shoot, she will track mind much? Whoa, 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 wait one thousand second! Four months? How could that even possibly be right if the Denliner was there in the exact present while only able to be, you know what? Forget it! I just can't wrap my mind around this wibbly wobbly time whiny nonsense! One of the cars of the Zero Liner, the Zero Liner Nagi Nada, which is a, basically a helicopter, hockey and helicopter, the two sided Nagi Nada for the blades comes in near the truck. And Kamen Rider Zero knows who is in his Vega form for some odd reason, which I theorized on earlier, drops on top of the pig's head on the machine Zero Horn. Well, Momotaros and Rotaro come in riding and bicycle. Momotaros, go! Henshin! You know, in that context, that actually seems kind of redundant. I'm not even actually sure what the actual translation exactly is, but I do know that's definitely redundant. <laughs> Wow, poor choice of words. But then again, when you expect when you keep saying the word climax all the time. As a contract holder's truck is rushing toward the gate and it turns out the brakes are broken. Wow, now that is giving me deja vu, and not in the random weird feeling way either. Nudo jumps over to the truck in Altair form, leaving Denna behind to drive the Zero Horn and unloads all the barrels of gasoline. As both the truck and the Denlang are heading for a cliff each separately, Nudo and Ari jump off the back of the truck and Denna starts popping the wheels causing the truck to flip sideways. Good thing that he had a seatbelt. CONTINUE REVIEW! Jeez, I wasn't even gonna go on for that long at all. In fact, I was nearly finished. <laughs> Whatever. Meanwhile, the seatbeltless den liner starts plummeting to its doom, but is rescued by the king liner. And we cut back to normal time and space where the truck has stopped thanks to Denub, and Deno and the pig imagine are looking it out. <laughs> You know, it's usually Momo who calls Evil Imagine something Yaro. Like, this guy would probably get called Buddha Yaro. Co Buddha Yaro? Buddha Yaro Tachi? Whichever. The Pig Imagine ends their fight with a nasty blow to Deno's back, which, due to the aura armor and aura skin of the suit, means that Momo Tauros just took all damage. Man, there's some deja vu again right there. Right in the back. Thankfully, the other Imagine revealed that the station master fixed the problem with the Denliner, and with the Keitaro's belt buckle add on thing, transforms Deno into Deno Climax form, which is quite notably not show Climax form. 
The three additional imagine notice there's something off with Momo to the four months he's been hobo Momo, and the pig imagine acts like a complete hypocrite. <laughs> キモい。キモい。うるせえ。キモいって言うな。お前たち人のこと言えたかを天下盛りなら勝ちが完成で。僕たちの方が一人多いし。え、そうでした。いや、それがどうした。四対三で僕たちの勝ち。もういいから。み
Well, the station master pulling out a Deus Ex Machina with the King Liner was basically the only thing that could actually save the Den Liner within the established canon. That's basically the secondary function of the King Liner to begin with, to save out of control trains, apparently. It's never actually mentioned why Owner was taking the measurements after the station master had contacted him. Not in this movie, anyway. I don't know if he actually explained it in the second movie or what, though. Mostly because I don't remember. The episode color choices. Okay, I know I'm nitpicking here, but let's face it. Episode Blue's color was the only one that even remotely made sense. Xeronos' main form is Altair form, which is green, and he clearly still had access to it. Obviously, they were trying to copy Decade's printer cartridge theme, but failed miserably because not only did they force the red and yellow colors, it's supposed to be magenta and cyan, not red and blue. There's also the fact that they're not copying Pokemon here, folks. Japan had a green version. That was a con, by the way. Pro. The humor, pretty much the sole redeeming factor of Deno after the show had ended. Overall, I thought this movie was uh, kind of okay, actually, in spite of it all. The whole Yuto and Ari thing was kind of underplayed except for in those two scenes. I, I honestly have to give it a 3 out of 5 because that wasn't actually that bad. Error! Sensors indicate your spirit is not broken! Ah, uh, is that what you're after? <laughs> you're joking, right? Ew, what a fool. DOES NOT COMPUTE! MY ORDERS ARE TO EXTERMINATE YOU IF YOU SURVIVE! Err, uh, uh-oh. Libra Pony? No. Wait. Lord God Libra? Why are you here? I have decided to lift my restriction on your powers, as you should be smart enough to not abuse them, and the viewing is a very dangerous job. I know you are able to respawn, but only at least after a few hours, which would be detrimental to your new role. Storywriter created me and my laws because he wanted to make sure that as you still have your godly powers, your powers were limited. But now we have come to the realization of how unnecessary that truly is. Do know that if you abuse your powers, I'll be right here to take you to a time-dilated pocket dimension for you to in your lecture, as always. Talk over! Hey, yeah, Dalek, I have a question for you. Before you exterminate me, you don't really sound like a Dalek. Why? This unit is not actually a Dalek, but a sentient artificial intelligence created by Master and put in a Mark Error travel machine. I see. Huh, by the way, do you want to know why your plan A failed? Explain. It's for the same reason that kind of thing always fails. We're reviewers. It's our job to review things regardless of held against our will or not. It's our responsibility to review the bad stuff and stuff we don't like so that people don't wind up watching anything worse than a B-movie or buying a horrible game. Your time is up. Exterminate! Uh, yeah, about that? Uh, Libra looked at his laws, so now I get to do this. Mask! Change! Don't I do? Man, I really need to come up with a better name for this thing as the mask is the only thing that doesn't change. What is going on? Explain! Explain! Basically, you're screwed. Hisatsu. Origo Hisatsu Waza! Go Kaiju Version! Error! Error! I wonder who sent that Dalek bot after me. This thing has given me an idea, though. 
And just one more finishing touch. And there. Say hello, Cybermat. Hello. <laughs> so, how does it feel to have just been built? This unit is operating under optimal parameters. <sighs> this one's gonna take a while. And a new voice chat. Let's see, what should I review next? It's the next chapter, the ultimate goal. Ready for battle, brave and bold. I know we're gonna make it, we will find a way. Oh, oh, we've come so far. We fought so hard to get where we are. Oh, oh, we belong together. It's always you and me. Kingliner get its own writer anyway. Yeah, I'm sure there's some fan character version thing of a Denline Kingliner writer. <laughs> 